Look, <clears throat> hello guys. <clears throat> so I've been meaning to bury this guy for a long time, uh, much like he does to other up-and-coming superstars. And uh, the guy I'm going to tell you about is um, Mr. Triple H. Now, many may consider some of the criticisms. Um, let me let me start with an introduction. Uh, I have a problem with the IWC at the moment and their focus on John Cena. That's the problem in WWE for two reasons. One, I think John Cena is a load of fucking garbage. I just want to clarify that. He, he's, he's the worst face of the company in the history of faces of the company. Um, but however, is he the real poison underlying this whole new um, PG era bullshit? Um, is he the is 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 he basically the guy that is, um, how would I put this? What I'm trying to say is, I've had enough of Triple H. I've seen this guy since the beginning. There has never been a point in his career where he's been interesting. He's cut a couple of good promos over the time, but he's hogged far too much space for how little skill in terms of charisma that he has on the mic. His whole stint with DX is the most overrated bullshit on TV ever. Any idiot who actually, and I'm sorry, anyone who wants to watch this and dislike me because I'm calling people who like DX, I, I can't see how you could like them. They were morons. Um, they acted like children. They had no charisma. I mean, how how can you compl compare DX to Stone Cold Steve Austin? And why do you think Stone Cold Steve Austin went over above um, the Generation X? Why do you think The Nation and, and The Rock went over um, above DX and, um, you know, their, their stupid childish suck it like bullshit? This was the first attempt, because what, uh, you know, uh, Triple H was trying to use DX as a vehicle for, and I'm sure Shawn Michaels and the clique were uh, much to do with this, was to use it as a vehicle to become the face of the company. He wanted to become the face of the WWE, and he used a very, very cheap gimmick, which he knew a lot of very, very um, childish people who thought that was really rebellious to go, ooh, every week, suck it, and with the road dog and his stupid if you're not down with this, you know, or whatever. The most easy thing, I could come up with something. Like, I could come up with, um, let me let me think right off the top of my head. I could go around saying, oh, screw you, or something like that, you know. Uh, like, and, and you'd get a bunch of imbeciles who think um, this is somehow amusing because it's rebellious, you know. And, and notice how... DX comes about after Stone Cold Steve Austin, after the whole attitude was born, okay? So they, they're like, oh, wait a second, this rebellious guy really works. So, um, you know, what we're going to do is just, you know, come up with a completely unoriginal, um, almost similar, identical take to this character. I mean, how far does Triple H's character really even differ, you know, in terms of um, the way he he kind of um, presented himself from Stone Cold Steve Austin. There's only minor differences, really. Uh, you know, don't trust anybody. Um, you know, the rattlesnake, um, all of these things. And then you have the game, uh, the, the, the King of Kings, this guy who would do anything to get the WWE Championship, which was basically you know, uh, and was a rebel and, and, and was against authority and etc. Et and, and, and was this badass heel, you know, but but who people liked. That is exactly what Triple H was trying to do. It's exactly what Triple H was trying to do. And it was unoriginal. Everyone could see through it. And at the time, Triple H was over, but he wasn't anywhere near as over as Stone Cold Steve Austin or The Rock. And that's what he's trying to present to people these days. Like, he was the third guy. He wasn't even the... Look, Mick, I can tell you, Mick Foley was more over than him um, in the Attitude Era. Um, <clears throat> um, 
uh, Kurt Angle was more over over than him in the latter time, uh, you know, had more heat than him in the latter part of the Attitude Era. Um, Eddie Guerrero at his time was more um, over than than uh, you know Edge, Jericho. The list goes on. Triple H was never really even close to being the guy that that that. that got people to, 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 to watch the show. I mean, it, it's just uh, absolutely absurd. The only time people's eyes were on Triple H was when he was feuding with one of the, uh, the big guys in the company. When he was feuding with one of the over guys in the company. And that's how he's made his name during the beginning part of his career. Um, now, let's just get back to this. Because um, he just really fucking annoys me. He really does, and, uh, and I'm so annoyed at, like, uh, you know, IWC or, like, people who try and defend this guy. Like, it's so obvious what he's done um, by marrying the boss and creating this whole propaganda. If you go, go, please, I, 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 I implore you to go back. If you haven't seen Triple H, go back. They're all on YouTube. Go back and watch um, Attitude Era episodes and see what Triple H was doing in comparison to what The Rock and Stone Cold Steve Austin were doing. How much more innovative and interesting Stone Cold Steve Austin and The Rock were. And then go to the, you know, the end latter part, which was, um, you know, uh, 2000, 2001, where the ratings were absolutely at their highest. Um, and uh, go and see what Kurt Angle was doing in comparison to uh, to to, to um, Triple H. He was never interesting. The Man Helmsley thing was only the only time that got interesting is because he paired himself up with um, with, with uh, Shane McMahon, who was cool, and um, uh, and obviously Stephanie McMahon, who. In spite of what the IWC say or whatever, and and I know Bruce Blitz, who I I respect his views a lot on on this stuff. He says Stephanie McMahon wasn't a great heel. Stephanie McMahon got fucking um, Triple H more heat than I reckon Triple H got himself heat. I, I I mean that like she was a better heel than fucking Triple H. She was much more cool and like annoying and aggravating but in an entertaining way, in a way that, okay, I don't want to necessarily change the channel because Stephanie McMahon is on. Because she always got her comeuppance and, you know, it, it was good. She she played her role well, okay? Now, the whole idea in wrestling history of a heel is that they are supposed to make the baby face look good while still pres being presented as a thread. Now, how is that the case with Triple H? When Triple H, during his whole rock feud, where his job, he was the main heel, uh, supposedly made himself the top heel, even though others were rising uh, very, very rapidly to, to exceed him because they were more entertaining as heels, um, such as Kurt Angle, which I've told you. Um, and during uh, that whole period, he didn't even lose clean to the rock. Not once did he lose clean to The Rock, the top guy in the industry at the time. I don't even think he lost clean to Stone Cold Steve Austin. I'm not sure he lost, you know, like, it would either be The Rock pins um, uh, Mr. McMahon or something else happens and, you know, and fair enough, you could say, okay, it's just scripted to make the thing look more exciting. But the fact is... Even during the matches themselves, if you go back and watch the matches, the way, um, you know, um, Triple H is just like, he manhandles everyone he goes into the ring with, whether he's, uh, and, and in, a, in the most boring fashion as well, he manhandles everyone he goes into the ring with, um, doesn't make them look good at, or, or dangerous or, or like a force to be reckoned with at all. Even Stone Cold fucking Steve Austin had to, like, you know, like, I, I, barely made him look like a, a threat when he was fighting him. You know, apart from in that um, six-man uh, um, match where it, it, in the cage, that was the time where he made him look most dangerous. 
But, um, you know, apart from that, where the focus wasn't really on them, when the focus was on Stone Cold Steve Austin versus Triple H, Triple H was manhandling, you know, and that is that is not what a good heel does. Go back and look at the history of good heels. Look at Macho Man. Look at, um, look at uh, Million Dollar Man. Look at um, all the great heels. Ric Flair. The job, even even someone like Shawn Michaels and Ric Flair, who I do not like, I do not even like Ric Flair and personally. I know that they were really good at their jobs. Shawn Michaels would make anyone he goes in the ring with look excellent, especially if he was a heel. He'd make um, uh, Ric, Ric Flair the same, made them look like a million bucks when he was a heel. You know, and this is the the, the real fucking problem with Triple H. You know, not only is he he, he, he literally was trying to bury The Rock, I promise you. He was trying to bury The Rock before The Rock, could, you know, while The Rock was in the nation. Um, he then had the power to do it when he really started going out with Stephanie McMahon and started trying to make his way to edge himself over to have the coolest storylines and whatever, you know. So there was that. Then um, he saw Kurt Angle coming on the rise, um, and he, he tried to bury him, but Kurt Angle was just so good at what he does that it, it, he couldn't be buried. Um, but then eventually, you know, he once The Rock and Stone Cold Steve Austin left, it was pretty much, you know, either Kurt Angle's the man, or, 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 or um, you know, uh, or Triple H will be the man, or... Perhaps other people came up afterwards, like Eddie Guerrero and, uh, you know, John Cena and stuff like that. But there was an, a conscious attempt to keep, you know, Kurt Angle away from Raw. We know this. There was back politics to keep Kurt Angle away from Raw, from the live show, which he wanted to go on. Um, you know, and, uh, you know and, and then he goes on to um, bury other talents, such as Booker T, RVD, um, the list just goes on and on, and then he has the nerve to call Jericho, Edge, and uh, Christian B plus players. He's the biggest B plus player of all fucking time. His mic skills are nowhere near the best people on the mic. His wrestling skills are nowhere near the best people in the ring. What does this guy do good? The only thing I could give him is maybe, maybe at, at a a real, a real stretch. He's he's a maybe a good storyteller in the ring, and that's it. That's it. Maybe a good storyteller in the ring, and I don't think he really is. To be, to be quite frank, he's got three moves of doom, just like John Cena. Um, he brawls. At least John Cena, like you know gets beaten up most of the time when he's in a match. Um, Triple H just beats people down like the whole way through, like the whole way through a match. And let me tell you, like find me five matches in the last ten years in which Triple H has won clean. Or Triple H has lost clean. I can tell you that um the the uh he lost clean to Brock Lesnar, only to come back and and, and, and pay him seven million to do a job for him. Um, I mean, I, I can't think of it. I mean, I really, really can't think of it. He's won clean a lot of time as a heel, which you're never supposed to do. Like, the whole point of a heel is they're supposed to cheat to win, and that's basically what they do. Um, he's got to be the heel that has won clean the most amount of times out of any heel in the history of the fucking business. And if if you can find me a heel that has won clean, apart from maybe, I don't know, Yo even Yokozuna, the, even the big men, even Andre the Giant, you know, big men like that didn't win as many times clean as fucking, um, as, as Triple H. It's it's maddening. Not even I don't even think the Big Show or Undertaker or any of them have won clean as many times as this guy as a heel. He's just a poison, and the fact he tries he's put this whole propaganda. He's come out with this new shit DVD.
trying to make himself look like innocent, smell like roses, like he, he doesn't do all this kind of stuff, this backstage politics. It's bullshit. It's absolute bullshit. Do not fall for this guy's bullshit. I want to put a link down as well. Please watch this. He does it. Uh, it's um, from um, Tough Enough um, in year, the year 2000, where he's talking about Goldberg. And he buries Goldberg, a man who has far more athletic ability and charisma than he will ever have. And I don't give a fuck what the IWC says about um, Goldberg. It's all bull manufactured WWE bullshit. The guy was a beast in the fucking ring. But I saw this guy do a fucking backflip in the middle of the ring one time. Just randomly a backflip. You know, and then fucking spear a guy. Don't tell me any bullshit. If you don't know... If you've just been watching wrestling for the last two years or whatever, and you're a CM Punk fucking guy, uh, wannabe wrestling fan, and I do like CM Punk, so it's nothing against CM Punk fans. I'm just saying, guys who are new to wrestling, maybe started watching in 2007 or whatever, Attitude Era was gone, then you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Go back, watch the stuff. It's more entertaining than what's going on now. I can tell you that for a fucking big part of like thing. And I can tell you another thing, that motherfucker Triple H had nothing to do with it being entertaining. In fact, every time Triple H came out, you wanted to change the channel. That, that's the truth. He didn't get good heat. He was a, you could say he's a good heel in the sense that you didn't like him. But the reason you didn't like him is because he was a phony. And you knew he was a phony. Even then, even without looking on the internet, you were just like, this guy, what, what's his fucking problem? Can't he just lose? You know, like, um, even back then, you were just like, why is this guy going on like a badass? Why is this guy taking up so much of the programming time when he, you know we want to see The Rock, or you know we want to see Stone Cold Steve Austin, or you know we want to see fucking um, Kurt Angle, or why are you in the championship picture again? Weren't you just in the championship picture and you lost? What the fuck is your problem? Get off the fucking screen. Get... Go somewhere else, do feud with someone else, you know. Or when you're uh, fighting lesser talent, you know, Rock will put over Jericho, he'll put over Edge, he'll put over, you know, the same with Kurt Angle, the same with Stone Cold Steve Austin, put over Jericho, um, put over Edge, put over Kurt Angle. You know, all of these guys, and Stone Cold Steve Austin was paranoid as fuck about being, uh, about being on top. And even he, when it came down to it, if he, if he had to lay down, if he had to lose clean, he'd lose fucking clean. You know what I'm saying? This is fucking bullshit, man. It's fucking bullshit. There are legends who are, have, you know, luckily Stone Cold Steve Austin and The Rock, you know, they have. And there's one last thing. I'm going to do a video next. Please, um, if you like this video, like and subscribe. I'm going to do another video on why Kurt Angle isn't being allowed, allowed back into the WWE. It is nothing to do with any of his drinking or any of that. There's a very... Because people who have had worse, who have done worse with the WWE, like Superstar Billy Graham and all of that, have been let back into the WWE. There's a reason, and that reason is that big nose motherfucker, Triple H. Fucking sucks.